Finally, tonight, some perspective. The media and Democrats have found another, quote, useful idiot in Congresswoman Liz Cheney. This happens quite often with anybody who goes against Trump. Michael Cohen, Anthony Scaramucci, Jeff Flake, these are other great examples. Democrats and the media love them for a few minutes, use them to trash Republicans and Trump, and validate Democrats, and then they throw them away. Liz Cheney's 15 minutes of liberal fame are happening right now. Today, she did an interview on the Today Show. Most of it was about Donald Trump. For reasons that I don't understand, leaders in, in my party have decided to embrace the former president who launched that attack. And I think you've watched over the course of the last several months um, the former president get more aggressive, more vocal, um, pushing the lie. Now, to Democrats and the media, this storyline is too good to be true. Look, 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 another Republican that hates Trump. Oh, my God. We're right. We're right. Trump's awful. You're wrong. We're right. The number three Republican in the House is ousted because she wouldn't go along with the big lie that the 2020 election was stolen. That's the story, right? Only a fool would believe that this is really why Cheney was ousted. The truth is this. A vast majority of Republicans now willingly admit the last election was not stolen from Donald Trump. Mitch McConnell says it all the time. Have there been any votes to remove him as Senate leader? No. The reason Liz Cheney was ousted is because she's trying to use January 6th to commandeer the Republican Party back to its old ways, the party that Trump changed. And we all know it. Cheney wants to change it back. She's one of a very small group of Republicans that hate the populist movement. They hate America first. They hate reduced military involvement overseas. It doesn't jive with whatever it is that Liz Cheney is trying to get out of her political career. She does not like this. Cheney is poisoning her own party by trying to gloss over four years of incredible progress and incredible work that was done by a great administration to focus on the disaster that was January 6th. She wants you to forget everything that was done during those four years, all the great stuff that was proved that government can do for people, that they can focus on people. She wants you to forget all that and only focus on January. And she's literally strengthening the Democrat Party every day, every day and weakening her own because she simply cannot get her way. She's angry and she's defiant, and that's why she was voted out of that position, and that's why she may very well lose her position in the House when she goes up for re-election next year. All right, time now for the news from the left. Wonder Woman actress Gal Gadot in trouble for a post in support of her home country, Israel, amid the conflict with the terror group Hamas. On Twitter, Gadot writing, this is a vicious cycle that has been going on for far too long. Israel deserves to live as a free and safe nation. Our neighbors deserve the same. I pray for our leaders to find the solution so we could live side by side in peace. That is a very, very, very normal common sense phrase. Certainly nobody could find fault with that statement, right? Well, of course they could. Leftist Twitter trolls calling for boycotts of the actress and her films, criticizing her service in the Israeli Defense Force, which, by the way, anybody knows is mandatory for all Israeli citizens over the age of 18. The Twittiots, as I call them, calling her a terrorist and a, quote, literal tool of propaganda. The actress, for her part, has not bowed down to the woke mob, continues to stand up for Israel. Good for her. Next up, more woke nonsense from the halls of higher education. Penn State has announced they will no longer use terms like freshman, junior, or senior to refer to students because these terms are not inclusive enough and perpetuate a Western male-dominated viewpoint. On April 27th, Penn State's Faculty Senate Committee of Curricular Affairs, people that need hobbies and girlfriends, passed the resolution titled Removal of Gendered and Binary Terms from Course and Program Descriptions with a Majority Vote. I would so desperately like to attend one of these meetings just to verify that people this ridiculous actually exist. I'm, I'm still kind of skeptical because this is all so stupid. It somehow keeps happening. You could actually see these stories actually being like a right-wing conspiracy and some crazy guys just dreaming them up. But they're not. This stuff actually happens. There are actual liberal people this stupid, and our colleges are full of them. Terms like freshman, junior, and senior will now be replaced with labels like first year, second year, third year, fourth year, even sophomore they're going to do. Uh, upperclassmen, lowerclassmen now going to be referred to as upper division students and lower division students. The idiocy rolls on. The reasoning, according to the resolution, the university, as uh, with most all academic institutions worldwide, has grown out of a typically male-centered world. Terms like freshman are de decidedly male-specific. 
while terms such as upperclassmen can be interpreted as both sexist and class, classist. According to CampusForum.com, more than 88% of the university students agreed with the change, approved of the change. Who's going to say they don't? You're going to get canceled. So dumb. All right, next up, the Fonz. In trouble for a picture on social media, actor Henry Winkler, better known as Arthur of the Fonz, Fonzarelli from Happy Days, tweeted a photo of himself on a recent fishing trip. Here it is. I can't even express the beauty everywhere on our planet as he catches a beautiful fish in a river. Well, here come the PETA warriors. Social media up in arms. Winkler would post such a sentimental quote along with such a barbaric image. One person responding, oh, look at the grown man tormenting an animal for the fun of it. Now you'll double down with some nonsense about them not feeling pain or being able to live with torn mouths, animal cruelty. Or maybe he's eating it. Hopefully he did eat it, and I hope he enjoyed every last bite. Finally, some breaking news. A critical story that demands your attention because it impacts nearly all Americans. Fast food chain Chick-fil-A recently announcing they would be rationing their sauce due to a, quote, industry-wide shortage. It's a sad story for everyone as Chick-fil-A is one of the very few conservative institutions that liberals will enter. So this does actually affect everybody. In fact, after our next civil war, which could be coming any time, the peace treaty will likely be signed at a Chick-fil-A. To meet customer demand, Chick-fil-A is limiting customers to one dipping sauce per item ordered at many of its 2,600 locations across the country. They're making a lot of money. The shortage in sauce is due to supply chain issues and labor shortages that are affecting many fast food chains in the country. You want to know why there's a labor shortage? Ask the geniuses who are paying people $40,000 a year to not work. That's why you can't get your sauce at Chick-fil-A. You have one person to blame. You know who he is. We'll keep you posted. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.